Welcome everybody to our challenge. This is Jason Seacrest and we are going to go through our overview today. We're going to go through some of my top tips, especially as you are getting started to try and get rid of as many of those initial frustrations, especially with Illustrator. So we're going to try and cover a couple of different things. We're going to go through what our steps look like and then setting up our documents. And then we're going to go through some top tips, especially as you are getting started. So let's just go through what our next couple days look like. I'm just going to go through my layers and it's literally step by step through this entire process. So day one is going to be all about just getting our line work down. And with this entire tutorial and this entire challenge, we're going to be really trying to use a limited palette. We're just going to try and go through as many different tools that I can think of that are going to be beneficial to you depending on what type of art style you're going to be doing. So we're going to try and keep it limited and then we're just going to master those and you can be highly proficient just using those tools. So there's a bunch of things that as we start moving on, we start adding on more uh, courses and more challenges and things like that that we'll cover. But I think for the most part, most of you are going to be able to be very almost into a professional range with some very, very limited palettes. So day one is going to be all about just drawing with our pen tool as well as some basic shapes. So that is all day one. Day two is about getting our brushes down. We are gonna also clean up our line work. Day number three is gonna be all about adding on our flat color. That is a quickie. We're gonna go through some different tools. We're gonna go through blob brush. We're gonna go through live paint, our shadows. We're gonna get down. There are some easy ways of adding in shadows and we'll show you that. And then we're all gonna be doing some different highlights. So we're going to be doing some gradients as well as some different ways of adding on some highlights. With that last day, day five, we're going to be adding on basically this white offset path as well as this drop shadow. And we're going to be finishing it all up. So that is what the next five days looks like. If you are on this page, you are going to realize that in the next hour, you could pretty much finish this guy up. So you're going to notice that all the videos, everything is there. I'm trying to give you as many little top tips and little things that I would recommend as you are going through it. So you're just going to notice that each one has a little bit step by step. It's going to have a video. And then it's also going to have anything that I would think you might struggle with. We're going to have that and that's what all those little kind of pop-ups and little top tips are. So just pay attention to all of those as you're going through it. Now what we wanted to do today is those were the overview. So that's what the next couple steps just look like. I wanted to go just through some top tips as you are getting started, what I would recommend. So first things first, Artboard 101, Vector 101. As you are getting started, you're gonna notice that you, we typically build in a five by five inch format. You can really do as much different things as you want and it's all gonna be dependent on what you're building towards. So if I'm building towards mobile device, the web, if I'm building towards print, a lot of those things are already built for you. But also just keep in mind that almost everything will have a template version for you and or Google will let you know. So if you're building for, let's say a YouTube icon or a banner or a Twitter banner, or anything, if I'm building for a business card, anything like that, they will have a format for you. So if I'm doing a, uh, let's say this is a YouTube thumbnail, so 1920 by 1080, that's gonna be in pixels, that's RGB, YouTube let me know what the format is. So if you are ever confused, just Google it and or go to your print provider and they will let you know what all of this is. If you don't have anything, so most times, nine out of 10, I'm just drawing something. I'm just using my five by five. All of my cartoon brushes are, are, are already formatted for a five by five. So that is gonna be what I am gonna recommend. Keep in mind Vector 101 here, you could scale it anytime. So once you've finished a project, you can scale it to whatever size. If you want it to be a billboard, you could do that. If I wanted it to be a little tiny thumbnail, I could do that. If I wanted to get even smaller, those little icons on the top of your web pages, uh, Favicon, I believe it is called, you could scale it to that little tiny 15 by 15 pixel or whatever it is gonna be. So you could scale it to whatever size and once you know you can scale it, it really doesn't matter. Now, if I'm doing my five by five, that is just so we can keep all of our brushes the same and we don't have to scale our strokes. So if you've been playing around and you've already been, this isn't like your first time opening up Adobe Illustrator. And if you're drawing strokes and that one point is insanely big. So let's just draw a nice little line for you. So if I draw a line and this thing is super fat, 
and then just change the size of your artboard. So you're more than likely you're just drawing on a very, very small artboard as you're getting started. So let's just have some fun here. I'm gonna go through some, just some different preferences that I like to see. I usually hide my artboards. Other things that I do under view, I usually do not have any of my snaps turned on. Since I am doing more of an organic drawing, meaning I'm doing a cartoon, I don't ever really want snaps. So I, it usually fights my mouse and it fights where I want my anchor. So I do not turn that, I have all those turned off. You will also notice that directly above I have my smart guides turned on. So let's just turn that off. I'm just going to delete this and we're gonna go through some preferences here. So smart guides turned on under preferences. What we're trying to do is get rid of a lot of the frustration, especially as you are grabbing things with your mouse. So probably 90% of the frustration is the computer just doesn't know what you're grabbing. So we're going to start playing into how do we help that. So a couple of different things just on my general preferences, I would recommend having show tool tips turned on. So if you don't know what everything is yet, I would definitely have your, your show tool tips turned on. Other thing I would turn off is your double click to isolate. I think it's just annoying for beginners. So if you double click too fast, it'll basically isolate a shape and then you have to click escape. So I recommend just having that turned off. We have a very clean layer menu and everything is already gonna be clean and separated for you. So we don't have a bunch of things building up all, all together where that's gonna be coming into play. So just have that turned off as you're getting started. Now the one I'm definitely going to recommend, I would recommend having your handles and your anchors as big as you humanly possibly can make them. And that is just so as you are aiming for your anchors, as you are aiming for a handle, it knows what you are trying to, to grab and it, you have something that's a little bit bigger for your mouse to grab. So that is gonna be something that I am definitely gonna run, recommend. And then I would also recommend just having your little rubber band turned on. I don't know if rubber band is available on every single one. I am on CC. You're gonna notice that there's all sorts of different little things that you could upgrade. That helps out me and the channel, by the way. And if I am just drawing a circle, let's turn on our, let's do a nice little blue here. I can just mess around. I can have it nice and fat. If I'm doing just the pen tool P, I can start playing around with strokes. Now you're gonna notice pretty fast that on all of my tutorials, I do not have anything dealing with both stroke and fills. Reasons for that is we don't wanna sit there and compete with things trying to connect. So all of mine have the anchor point guides. So first things first, it's gonna cover up the anchor point guides. Number two is you're gonna to have to be dealing with all of this trying to connect. So I will try and make your lives very, very easy is if I have something selected, just deal with one or the other. So a little top tip is I usually recommend just building with your strokes first rather than having both. Now let's just go through another little top tip. Let's black arrow. Black arrow will do a lot of the big stuff. And if you've de dealt with anything before, if I hold down shift, all of this is pretty pretty standard, I would think, to most image graphic type of things moving forward. Most people do start with Photoshop, so this is very, very, really, really basic. If I hold down Shift, just realize that it scales in proportion. If I go Alt and Shift, it basically goes from that, that center point. So if I'm trying to do a circle that is nice and centered, I can go Alt, I can go Shift, and I'm using my Smart Guides. Boom, it's good to go. Now you might be able to see my Smart Guides. They are very, very low gray. You can always turn those on to like a hot pink. So if I'm doing my Smart Guides in preferences, I don't know if we went through this or not. I just went ADD on you guys. Uh, I can always double click this and I can change this to whatever crazy pink color I want. I wanted it pretty low just because I don't like having hot pink lines shooting all over my video. Now, let's go through the little pickle. Let's just zoom in. So a little top tip, be extremely zoomed in as you are learning. Reasons for that, remember, is the major, and I'm gonna say over 90% of the frustration comes when the mouse just doesn't know what you're grabbing. 
So if you can zoom in and be deliberate as you are grabbing, you are going to be very, very happy as you're moving forward. So as we are moving on to white arrow, white arrow, the shortcut is A. Just get comfortable hanging out on the left-hand side of your keypad and or on the right. So if I'm a righty, so my left hand is always on the left-hand side of the keyboard. So I can click on A and I can click on V. So my left hand is always on the left-hand side of the keyboard. And the major difference, especially when it goes from, I started with Photoshop and then I moved over to Illustrator, is that we have two selection tools that you use a lot of the times and they usually bounce back and forth. So I will always recommend doing shortcuts for A, white arrow, black arrow is V. So if I say, hey, I wanna scale this thing down, next I wanna sit there and move to the anchor points, I have to click back and forth from white arrow to black arrow. So now with dealing with the frustration, let's just zoom in, this is Z. This is where white arrow A, I can grab an anchor I can grab a handle and then I can also grab a path. So this is gonna be one of my crazy top tips as you are getting started. I don't want you to drink a bunch of energy drinks. I don't want you to drink a pot of coffee, even though I'm really, I'm, I'm actually finishing up my, my pot of coffee right now. You wanna be highly deliberate with your mouse. So just realize with your smart guides turned on, I could grab the handle, I can come in, I could grab that anchor and I want to wait for it to say path anchor and I want you to be ridiculously slow as you are coming over wait for the smart guides to say handle and that's going to alleviate most of the frustration now this is what happens people come in and they go oh I want to grab this point and then they just start grabbing so notice that it still says path and then they grab no, no I want this path and then they they go crazy fast so one have your smart guides turned on I'm just gonna that's just shift C by the way so wait, so I'm still on white arrow. Wait for it to say anchor, drop it down. Wait for it to say handle, pull it over. If you're doing something with a path, then I can move that over. Now, most of the times I do not do path, but as long as you know that I can grab a path, as I'm coming over, path, 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 path. And I just want you to see how close, all right, I gotta be on it, right? In order for it to say, to say anchor. So just be aware that it's going to do all of that crazy stuff if I'm doing anything. And a lot of times you just grab and pull and that's what happens. So if you just take that little top tip right there, and I would probably say the reasons why people get fed up and frustrated and they throw their mouse across the screen in the first 10 minutes of working with this is right there. Smart guides aren't turned on and they aren't deliberate with their tools. Just go nice and slow. So don't try and learn this with energy drinks in you. Don't try and learn this being all trigger happy. And then don't try and learn this trying to learn, you know, hey, I've got a deadline and I've got to pump this thing out in the next hour. Okay. So it is a very, very smart program, but it can do a lot. So it doesn't know what you're trying to grab. So if we can just get rid of that, your lives are going to be super, super easy. And all right, right there. I'm going to tell you that. That is number one top tip so as we were going through everything if you can just be deliberate i go crazy slow through all of our tutorials and all of our uh step by steps just to get rid of all of that frustration right there so if you guys are just following along and you're not speeding ahead you are going to have a fun 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 time learning illustrator and if you are speeding ahead just remember nice and deliberate one have your smart guides turned on preferences right smart guides if you need it to be hot pink turn it on the hot pink selection and anchors have these as big as possible so your mouse knows what it is grabbing that is all i don't even know if i can say top tip number one but it is if you can get rid of not having your mouse know what it's grabbing you will be one happy set of little illustrators coming forward you might be most of my students are adults at this point so i won't say, i won't say little so let's do this uh, I think we have covered most of the top tips. Everything we are going to go through is step by step. Every tool, every window, every setting we go through together. And I'm, I'm done yapping. So let's have some fun. We are going to go through getting our resources, getting all of our files set up in the day one. 
But I just wanted to go through those little top tips for you. And I think we will have a great, great time drawing our little whale. So I look forward to going to day one and getting everything ready to go for our whale character.